There's new possibilities, new opportunities, and we're going to talk about some of those today as we look at where we're at right now, what's ahead, and what we can do uh, to be productive and successful uh, in the in the new year. I want to do say this as we start off uh, the new year. Thank you to everybody that invests time and energy into listening to the monthly market report and understanding what it takes to be the most educated professional in the market and the value of that and what it means to homeowners, families buying and selling homes all over the country. So with that as a sort of a backdrop, I'm going to start off with a, a quote here that I think sets up our time and maybe even sets up the new year where we're at uh, in our business. And it's this right here. The current change in supply and demand works in favor of the educated agent. You know, that's what we're, we're, we're certainly champions of here and talk about on the monthly market report all the time is how does the educated agent make a difference out in uh, in the market? You know, and if we think about uh, supply increasing over the past year, demand decreasing, it provides this opportunity. It works in favor of those that understand what's going on. And I'm going to sort of prove that as we go through the next few minutes here on the monthly market report. Now, I want to start and, and maybe give a little bit of context and go uh, back to a topic that we talked about last month, and that's on mortgage rates and give you a little bit of context uh, maybe a reminder of, of something we talked about, but uh, also another way to look at it, okay? So I, I want to go right here and, and, and first start with the reality of last year, of 2022, and that is that the 30-year fixed rate in this country doubled over the last year. We started out at 3.2% back in January a year ago, ended up right at 3.4% as we wrapped up the year. Never seen a year uh, in the mortgage rate doubling, never seen as rapid a rise in mortgage rates in this country. And all of that certainly has impacted the market. It's impacted you know, uh, folks uh, psychologically even maybe in the business and what's going on. And I think our job right now is to be certain and understand what is happening. And so, you know, we talked about that last month um, and, and really broke down the relationship between the 30-year fixed mortgage rate and the 10-year treasury yield. And if you remember, we talked about it's all about the spread, everything about the spread. And we went through the, you know, sort of the examples of why are rates not at five and a half percent? I'll bring that slide back up. You know, uh, if we go back to the year 2000 through 2021, really the past 21 years, and we see the average 10 year uh, uh, treasury was 3.49 percent, the spread there 1.79 percent giving us an average mortgage rate of 5.28%. So you take the treasury, you add 1.79%, and you get the, the average mortgage rate. And that average over the last 20 years has been 1.79%. And then we talked about how over the, uh, you know, the last couple of years, you know, that's fluctuated, but certainly in the last year, we've seen that spread rise where today, 10-year treasury, 3.69%, the spread, 2.79%, giving mortgage rates a, a rate right now, as of uh, this most recent posting from Freddie Mac, 6.48%, let's call that 6.5%. So that spread is has widened over the last year, okay? So if we, if we take this as an idea, then the answer to that is as that spread decreases, we see lower mortgage rates. And if the spread were normal today, we'd see an interest rate of just under 5.5%. Now we talked about all of this uh, last month. I'm kind of going over it again so you have an understanding of it. And I'm gonna give you a slightly different look at it because I think this is really, really important as we are educated in the market. And here would be my message right now. The spread right uh, between the 10-year treasury and the 30-year fixed mortgage is, is a measure of sort of uh, volatility and panic. And that panic is starting to subside. That's good news for long-term interest rates. And we've seen a little bit of relay, relief over the last six or seven weeks and a couple of chip-ups in the last few weeks, but you know certainly up and down, volatile right now. But if you look at the spread over the last year, we started in January of last year, and the spread's been rising. 
as panic sort of entered the market. You know, and if I kind of make this a little bit lighter and then draw in an arrow, you know, kind of the first part of the year, we see folks getting more uncertain about the economy, things happening and panic entering into uh, the equation uh, in our world economically. And then uh, around June of last year, if you remember, the Fed came out and said, we don't have this under control. We want to you know, reset the housing market. And we covered that extensively. And we saw the panic kind of go up again. And then we come to the end of this past year and we start to, to see the panic subsiding and, you know, um, folks and experts, economists, the Fed saying maybe, uh, you know, the peak of inflation is behind us. Now, I'm not here to say it's all about inflation and we need to, you know, sort of uh, not do anything about that. I think there are very real things that we can do. But the bottom line is there's still about a 1% difference between where that spread sits today and where it is sat historically. Okay. So as we do a better job helping to take panic out of the market, we will see that spread lower. And I'm going to talk about how we can do that. But this is really right now the difference between what I'm going to say is the confident agent and the confused agent. The confident agent says, you know what, I understand what's happening and I'm watching this and I'm informed and I'm educated. I am the educator. The confused agent right now says, I don't know what's going on. And I think this is going to be a delineation point for many, many agents as we go throughout the year. And, and I would encourage you to, to use this monthly market report, show it to your team, bring it uh, to them to say, okay, where are we right now? Are we a, a group of confident agents? Am I, if I'm, a, I'm a, a solo agent, am I a confident agent? Am I confused? Because here's the bottom line is we see that volatility, we see panic starting to come down in the market. Here are a couple of perspectives that I want to give you about opportunity right now. First is from Lauren Shun. The upcoming months should see a return of buyers as mortgage rates appear to have already peaked and have been coming down since mid-November. We've talked about that. I want to remind you of that. One of the probably, you know, you know, one of the premier thinkers in the mortgage business, Dave Stevens, former, uh, former assistant secretary of housing, uh, held positions at the NBA. He said this, and I think it's very important that we take note of it. He said, so be advised. This may be the only one and only window for the next few years to get into a buyer's market. And remember, as Federal Reserve data shows, home prices only go up and always recover from recessions, no matter how mild or severe. Long-term homeowners should view this market right now as a unique buying opportunity. You know, we, I started off this saying, you know, Happy New Year. Uh, there's opportunity right now. And there is absolutely opportunity in the market. Now, I'm going to get to here um, in the next few minutes what I believe is the biggest opportunity. But for the long-term homeowner, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity we haven't seen over the last couple of years. Now, I think there, there are things that stand in people's way and concerns and all that, and I want to address those. But I think if we miss this opportunity, we miss what this market can bring to us. You know, one of those concerns, and we talked extensively last month about it, was home prices. And I want to give you a little update on that, uh, the, the forecasts that are out, uh, and a little perspective and some things that we're seeing uh, in the market. So again, you can be the confident professional moving forward uh, with your clients. First, the one thing that is true right now about forecast for home prices is none of the experts agree. That is absolutely true. This is a look at the the forecasters that we follow, they go anywhere from, you know, uh, depreciation of 5% to appreciation of 5%. The important thing to remember right here is that we don't see any of these reputable forecasters calling for a free fall in prices in the housing market. And I think you're starting to see a turn in that as well. You know, one of the interesting things that has been published recently was an article uh, in the Wall Street Journal where they looked at home price appreciation before the pandemic and after the pandemic. And, you know, if you look at before the pandemic from, uh, you know, kind of the fall of 2017 up until uh, the spring of 2020, about 12 percent home price appreciation in that two and a half year time span. 
And if you think about the, the two and a half years going into this fall, since the beginning of the pandemic, what did we see? A tremendous amount of appreciation across this country in residential real estate, 38%. So would it make sense that in some markets and in some cases we would see a little bit of that come back? Absolutely it would. But again, not a free fall in prices. Like maybe some have said, people you know, in the media, uh, maybe people on YouTube, other places like that. Another fact that, that people uh, you know, think about in prices is every home out there is reducing their price right now. Simply not true. If you look at this, the share of homes having their price reduced going all the way back to 2021. Let's look at this graphic right here. At the height of the most recent information we have from Realtor.com in November was just over 1% of, of homes having a price reduction in the market. So again, not a free fall, not a situation where we're seeing uh, uh, you, you know, every home or, or a you know great majority of homes having their prices reduced, but just a, a slim piece there. And I think this is important that we remind ourselves, remind people we're working with that that is the case. And one of the questions that I would certainly put on the table right now is this question, have home values hit their bottom? Uh, this is a look right now at Case Shiller, FHFA, Black Knight, and CoreLogic in their month over month home value change. And if you sort of isolate uh, the last four months that have been published, what we see in each case, the depreciation peaked in August. Now, I'm not here to say that we're out of the woods, but what I am here to say is home price depreciation is not in a free fall. And as we go through November, December, we'll get this information. It runs in arrears. It's the best possible information for home prices. But but what I'm saying is you're not seeing it drop and continue to drop. May see, you know, a little bit here and there uh, coming forward, but not this precipitous decline uh, in home prices. We're going to continue to follow that. I want you to stay, you know, uh, tuned to the monthly market report every month so we can stay on top of this. But these are the questions that folks that are thinking about buying are asking right now. Maybe folks that are move-up buyers that are sellers that are asking right now. And I think one of the biggest things we have to do opportunistically in the market is we must control the narrative. We must control what's being said about our business because, you know, sometimes even, um, you know, the, the worst case scenario out in the media, they portray housing in one certain way, but even people in our business portray housing a certain way. And, you know, I, I think about this, some of the things that have been said recently about the housing market is frozen. And maybe you even talk to somebody in your office about that. Here's the bottom line. You take the December existing sales uh, report, the most recent one, over 11,000 homes sell every day in this country. And the proof of that is, is the math on the screen. You know, just over 4 million, dollars, 4 million homes in the existing home sales report divided by 365 is just over 11,000 homes every day. So that's not frozen by any stretch of the imagination. You know, if you use the analogy of maybe a shower, if the last couple of years were a shower, yeah, the water was warm, it was a great shower. It was, you know, at that point where it's not too hot, uh, uh, just warm enough where you could take a, you know, an hour long shower. There's no doubt that that's not coming out of the, the spigot right now. Maybe it's a little bit colder water, but it's not frozen. It's not in any stretch of the imagination. That also means that eight houses sell every minute in this country. Again, I put the math here on the slide. You take that 11,000 uh, uh, number and divide it by 24 hours, 467 every hour, divide that by 60, 7.8 homes sell every minute. So if somebody sits you down and talks to you about uh, for 10 minutes about how nothing's selling and how this market is this way, you can tell them, while we spoke, 80 homes just sold. And, and I think us controlling the narrative is critical. Here's one way it's critical. As we do that, we can help bring panic down out of the market. Remember, as we see panic subside, we see more advantageous mortgage rates there, and we can control that. If we become you know, sort of a slave to inflation and what the Fed is doing and we're out of control, then there's nothing we can do, but we can control what we can control, and that is the narrative. 
We can also suggest alternative means of financing. I think that's critically important right now. Adjustable rate mortgages and, and rate buy downs, you know, a two one buy down or a seller uh, concession that's applied to a buy down is very, very advantageous for those looking to buy right now. And just a couple of of quotes on that uh, as we as we think about that. First, uh, here from the Urban Land Institute, they say the risk of arms adjustable rate mortgages were substantially mitigated by the regulatory reforms put in place after the 2008 bust. Today's adjustable rate mortgage are not the risky products of 2008 or even the pre-bubble version. Arms are no longer something to fear. In fact, they could help borrowers save money and reduce barriers to home ownership. Having a partner that's a lender that can give great advice to folks that are thinking about buying is what we have to have. We have to have great uh, lenders, great agents working together uh, for buyers right now. You know, if you think about rate buy downs, uh, this comes from Real Estate News. Temporary rate buy downs are a hot trend for mortgages as borrowers face higher costs for home loans. Some buyers are exploring alternatives to traditional mortgages in a period of rising interest rates that is expected to continue into 2023. Buy downs are a less costly alternative to a traditional fixed rate mortgage. So, you know, whether it is a, you know, a buy down, whether it's an adjustable rate mortgage, thinking about, okay, how do we help this buyer in that market opportunity that we talked about before transact? I think that's critically, critically important. And I'm going to wrap up here uh, in just a minute with, with what I believe is the biggest opportunity right now. It is a new year. There is new opportunity. And I think Looking at this, there is an insight into um, probably one of the most opportunistic situations in real estate uh, as we speak. And I want to I want to kind of break it down this way. As you start to look at information and the data that's out there, one thing becomes true. Active listings over the past two years have grown. We wrapped up 2021 with just about 450,000 um, active listings uh, in this country. We're wrapping up 2022, uh, the latest information uh, for that, just uh, about 750,000 listings. So that's the first point. We have more listings today, and I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but what do we also know? Pending listings have decreased every month since the beginning of last year. They were stable month over month from February to March, but each month have trickled down, meaning pending listings is a uh, an indicator of velocity and demand in the market. Okay, so if, if there are less pending listings, that means less sales. So you have inventory increasing, pending or demand decreasing. What does that mean? The biggest opportunity for an agent right now is in expired listings. There are more expire. There are more listings that expire on December 31st than any other date in the year. And if you think about that, being able to sit down with somebody and have a conversation about why their home didn't sell is the number one opportunity in this market. And you can look at the information here and say, okay, uh, I, I can see that in listings rising and demand decreasing. Okay, what's my plan to go out? and have conversations with those folks. Biggest opportunity right now. And that's why I said I started this off and I said the shift in supply and demand is to the favor of the educated agent. That is no doubt true uh, right now in the market. And I'm going to wrap this up. And, uh, and, and if I were to give us a position right now of where we are at in real estate um, it is with a sort of a story I would tell you. I grew up in uh, in the South, little town outside of Atlanta, Georgia, and and we're sort of in this turn in real estate. And the reason that comes up to me um, is I grew up in a little town. My dad grew up in another little town in South Carolina where there was a racetrack, and we would go there every summer. And I started to learn about racing, car racing, and there is one thing that is for sure about car racing. It's this that a driver earns their income, builds their reputation, builds their career ultimately in the turn, not in the straightaway, but in the turn. And I'll tell you, in our business, we have been on the straightaway for the last couple of years. 
And we are clearly in the turn right now. You see, any of us could go out and get in a car right now, go straight down the highway on a straightaway and do 150 or 180 miles an hour. But when we came to the turn, we would panic, we'd hit the brakes and we'd hit the wall and we would crash. That is the reality. But in business, certainly in business, as you enter a turn in any market, the best leaders slow down. You know, if they're in a race car, they, they downshift, they pick their line and they accelerate through that turn into the next straightaway. And that's what we're heading towards. And, and I wouldn't want you to miss this. Our business is no different. The best agents right now understand that we're in the turn. They're getting their team together. They're maybe watching the monthly market report. They're saying, this is our plan. They're going after expired listings. They're planning for the spring market right now. They're not cutting back on marketing. They're looking at, okay, what's ahead? They're picking their line and they're accelerating into this turn because here's why. As we make that turn and come out of the turn, that's why some teams will be farther ahead than others. Some will be so far ahead, you can't even see them. And that's the reality of how careers and businesses have been built in real estate. There is no doubt in this market change, there will be careers and agents that build their business through it. And I think it's all about understanding and mastering the turn having the tools, having the mindset, and having the plan that help you and your team navigate through it. So as always, we want to give you the resources you need to make great decisions, to be informed, to be the confident professional that you need to be. You know, we'll be back next month uh, with a monthly market report. Uh, and as always, we are grateful for you watching. We are grateful for you uh, investing this time into understanding what it looks like to master the turn and the opportunity this year brings. So happy new year, and we'll see you back next month.